the Leadership Academy. Announced last year, this annual program was designed to take 14 dedicated students through an intensive eight-week course. The goal was for students with disabilities to become empowered by the classes, to be able to envision what their community could become, and to lead and bring about change. The students would also gain skills such as integrity, confidence, motivation, and learn to be flexible as they attended each class. Each week, the students were instructed by Linda Van Doren and Polly Livingston. Distinguished guest speakers who are local business, community, and educational leaders contributed their own experiences and advice. Each student was also paired with a mentor who gave them one-on-one -on -one expertise and guidance each week. The results of the Leadership Academy were outstanding, with each student rising to the challenges that were put in front of them. Each student is now reaping the rewards of their hard work. This is what they experienced. Taught by Mari Watanabe from the Portland Business Alliance and Yvonne Chang of Yvonne Chang Consulting, the first week of the Leadership Academy focused on defining what leadership is and what does or does not make up a good leader. Mari and Yvonne explained that there were steps that they each took to become leaders in their fields, and they emphasized the critical importance of seeing the big picture. The students were then given an exercise in which they had to write down the stereotypes of people with disabilities and the stereotypes of leaders. The students each came up with extensive lists and presented them to the class, furthering their knowledge and communicating their own personal experiences as a member of the disability community and someone who wants to become a leader. For week two, Jennifer Soulanier and Bob Speltz of The Standard covered tips for effective communication. Also on hand was Christina Albo from Resolutions Northwest, who discussed conflict resolution. Bob and Jennifer had a lot to say on the topic of communication, and they each told stories of how they had to use communication to achieve a goal. Jennifer also covered nonverbal communication, and that how you present yourself is key to your success as a leader. The class then flowed into Christina's section on conflict resolution. She gave the students an exercise in which they were lined up in front of one another and told that the objective of the exercise was to get the person they were facing onto their side of the line. The students learned that effective communication and conflict resolution go hand in hand, and that only by communicating can you work together to achieve goals. Stephanie Turner of Kaiser Permanente and Michael Tom of OHSU both stopped in to talk to the Leadership Academy students about diversity and inclusion. The class discussed how different experiences can influence the way they see the world and each other. The students examined their own identities and the ways in which others may incorrectly stereotype them. They learned to embrace their differences in opinions and ideas. After Stephanie and Michael's talks, the students broke up into the groups that they were assigned to at the beginning of the course. They had been given the task of doing both a group project as well as an individual project, both of which revolved around setting and then completing a goal. The groups could choose to do whatever they wanted to as long as it helped the community. The individual projects were focused on self-empowerment and personal growth. During week four of the Leadership Academy was a class about plan development and completion. John Murphy from PHC Northwest stepped in to teach the course and he delighted the students with a talk on some of the plans that he had come up with in his past as well as some of the plans he is currently developing. The lesson served as mostly a question and answer session with the students posing what if questions and gathering feedback on how best they should go about completing their own goals for their group and individual projects. John gave plenty of examples of his own personal insights and helped some of the students come to the realization that they might have to change their strategy in order to complete some of the goals they had set themselves.
Connecting Communities Coalition Steering Committee visited the Leadership Academy during week five. They talked to the students about how public meetings work and proceeded to explain Robert's Rules of Order, which are the standard proceedings for conducting a public meeting. Then as an example, the steering committee held their monthly meeting and utilized Robert's Rules of Order. This helped the students learn how to use the rules and show them what they would expect to see at meetings they might attend or hold as leaders. After the meeting, the students discussed their personal goals with each other. After last week's class, many of the students had taken John Murphy's advice to heart and altered their goals to make them more attainable. Each goal was then approved by Linda and Polly. Week six of the Leadership Academy covered commitment and problem solving. The class was taught by Dr. Carolyn Duran of Intel. She started her guest lecture by stressing how important it is to be committed to a project, even when the going gets tough. She asked about the challenges that the students had in completing their personal and group projects and gave them advice on how to overcome the obstacles by giving her own examples of how she had solved problems with her projects. After Carolyn's lecture, some of the students presented their individual projects. Blair Stady showed the class her photo album with newly added photos. Scott Batchelor gave a short talk on his visit to Winthrop, Washington and the kinds of diversity he had encountered. Josiah Barber also discussed a presentation that he had created and was going to present at his work. With the Leadership Academy winding down, Nicole Booker of Warner Pacific College arrived to help prep the students on how to give an effective presentation. She told the students about the different types of presentations they could give and helped calm some of their nerves. After Nicole's talk, the students launched into presenting their individual projects. David Williams stood up and overcame his fear of public speaking by giving a presentation to the class about some of the work he had done with connecting communities in the past. Ryan McBee showed the class the bingo card he had brailed himself. Tina Penman told the class about the ASL project that she would be putting up on YouTube. Samantha Richards talked about the car wash fundraiser she had planned and held during a weekend in August. Stephen Brown talked about an equity report he had created. Melody Cord showed the class her artwork and the new drawing she had been working on for the past few weeks. Seamus Kennedy told the class about his online art portfolio that he had updated with his new paintings. Adam Chris showed the class photos of his new apartment and told his story of moving all on his own. Samuel Renison talked a bit about the retreat for people with disabilities that he was planning. Lastly, Randy Hoth gave a presentation on the new coalition that he had started to help further his passion of blindness advocacy. On September 24th, the students had reached graduation day. One after another, each group presented their group project to the audience. Each project advocated and helped their community. David Williams, Melody Cord, and Adam Chris showed a PSA they had created to promote inclusiveness for people with disabilities. Blair Stady, Samuel Vranison, Seamus Kennedy, and Josiah Barber talked about donating clothes to those in need. Tina Penman, Ryan McBee, and Stephen K. Brown showed photos of their trip to a local retirement community and told stories of their visit with some of the residents. Scott Batchelor, Samantha Richards, Stephen M. Brown, and Randy Hoth presented on their experiences with the last Thursday event in Portland and the challenges that were apparent for people with disabilities. After the presentations, each student proudly accepted their certificates of completion from Leslie Garcia of OHSU and took photos with the two instructors. They then celebrated with food and drink, mingling with friends and family before standing together to take their class photo. Each student had worked diligently in order to reach this point in the course, and each walked away from the Leadership Academy with newfound knowledge and opportunities to become leaders in their community. Thank you.